So this is how right, you do so, it? Yeah, yeah. Just bring okay. it in. Ready? Yep, in. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, not again. All right, so, so take it back to the top. <laughs> okay. Welcome, guys, to this. Uh, little episode, webisode, whatever you want to call this. And this is basically a behind the scenes look at uh, our documentaries and not only that, but our new show, Good Guys Doing Good. And so, Luke, I have a couple clips for you to look at today. All right. And it's from the American Revolution documentary that uh, I helped you edit yes. and stuff like that. Yes. So we're going to look at those clips right now. It was a classic underdog story. The brash, untrained, and undisciplined colonists on their home turf against the most powerful and largest military force in the world, the British. So even though this is a really, really simple clip, Luke, how did you, one, get it smooth, two, how did you light it, and three, how, uh, just, yeah, just talk about your process. Sure, sure. So what I always love about the B-roll clips for a moment in history is the way we, the style we have is we usually take something small and really like hone in on the detail of it. And um, and you use the macro probe lens. Yeah, so we use the probe lens and, and that's um, what allows us to get these creative shots. I feel like the probe lens has been in the market for, I forget, five or six years now, yeah, but yeah, still yeah. it's, it, people don't, have it on the mainstream because you, yeah. you only can use it for like it's a true. niche little little things. But yeah, you when, can't get it wet. Some people have though. I've watched some videos well, where they well, do. Well, the no, the end of it is actually waterproof. Really? Yeah. Okay. So so, but I, we haven't explored that here yet. <laughs> maybe maybe we should do that on another episode. That'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah. So um, but all the moment of history clips that we do, it's kind of built around using the probe lens. Like I said, highlighting something small, whether it's a photo or even like, an, like a memorabilia item or yeah. whatever. Like the minifigures. Yeah, right so, <laughs> so I did really want to get, uh, use the minifigures for, yeah. um, especially this revolutionary war documentary because um, they, print all the red coats, they print yeah. the, you know, the, the re revolutionary. So, you know, just working with these minifigs, it's stuff that I did as a kid. So I, yeah. I was so excited to get my paints out, paint some guys yeah, yeah. up. And this, right, so this shot specifically, I wanted to um, kind of show from the ground level of mm -hmm. what it might have looked like. So. Yeah. So that's the cool about the macro and the wide angle macro of yeah. the probe lens. Um, you're pushing in and it feels like that these these minifigs are human size yeah. or the size of what you would see in normal lens. So um, that was the key behind the setup of that. And then um, I did want to push in and that, but I also wanted to have a turn too. So I used the, um, the Edelkron Pan Pro to spin, you know, to spin the hill there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I was pushing in, and um, with the equipment that we have here, our light stands sometimes they're a little rickety. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes what we set up is a little rickety. So um, I just had to make sure the balance was right, that yeah. it wasn't back balance and then pushing the yeah, forward yeah, balance yeah. and um, creating a rock yeah, that way. Nice. And then um, I. To tell you the truth, I use a little bit of warp stabilizer. Warp premiere, stabilizer, but there you I, go. But, <laughs> but if you get it close enough on set, um, you can use a little bit of warp stabilizer. It makes it right. But if you rely on warp stabilizer, yeah. it's never going to no, get it right. No, it's just no. going to jello. It, so. Sometimes it makes the background all jiggly, yeah, and then it's, it's just like, nah, it's not usable. Yep. Yep. So. All right, so this second shot is one of my favorite in the documentary. So let's go watch it continent of any worldwide contenders, at least in the East. All right, so with this shot, the one question I have, obviously you're probably using the same gear and kind of like similar setup, but how did you match up those two shots together? So the cool part about working in a studio is it's controllable. So 
you know, having the camera on a slider, um, you know, everything you do, it's you do it once, you can do it again. You, you know, so yeah. I did the push once, and then removed the guy, did the push again, and um, then added the crossfade. But okay. that being said, even though everything is controllable, everything moves to a slight hair when yeah, we do So I am tiny inch. <laughs> in Premiere, I ended up punching in slightly. You know, I mm -hmm. put a 50% transparency so I can line the two up and then I put it back to 100, okay, 100, so. 100 and put the crossfade on and that's how we yeah. ended with the shot. So, but you were able to get it in the first try, it was there a couple tries? No, it was the it was Really the first nice. Try. Yeah, yeah. Three. I mean, like I said, it might the have been a little Luke, Luke yeah. Brubaker right here. <laughs> sure, no. It was great equipment and, uh, you know, so. All right, and then we're going to look at this third shot. March 5th, several angry colonists approached the King's Custom House and began heckling the lone British guard. All right, so with this shot, it looks real enough to where it actually looks like you sprinkled something in front of it and uh, did it in slow motion, but how did you actually do it? So I am a big fan of practical effects, but I do have to say that I did this one in post. Okay. I, I use um, motionarray.com for my all my you know music, yeah, all yeah. my graphics, everything, and so it was you know one of the things on there. It had snow falling with it. I think it had a black background, okay. so I just used um, you know blending blending layers. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, no, that makes sense. Dropped out the black background there, and yeah, yeah. so so yeah, so but I do want to do some you know when we do a moment history yeah. where it's. I don't know if it's Christmas based or winter based somehow. Mm -hmm. I would love to do actually do actually practical do it. so like whether that, it's flower yeah. or I don't know make your own how that would work. Or whatever. So. I feel like you would have to make your own snow because I feel like if it's like flower or something and it would like clump together weird. Sure, sure. But I'm not totally sure. I don't know if you get I I've I have i have been watching some behind the scenes of how yeah. people do it with the you get a fine sieve yeah, and shake yeah. it the right way. But See, well, you'll you guys all have to stay tuned for that because right. <laughs> we'll try to find it. Right. And then finally, this fourth shot. The birth of the United States is the birth of a nation unprecedented in world history. The founding fathers intended that this nation be a place where anyone, no matter their background, could enjoy a life of freedom and could prosper so long as they were willing to work hard enough. So with this shot, how did you set it up? Because it looks like we're almost looking down, straight down right. onto the map. Right. And did you use the same lens? So for this one, no, it wasn't the pro blend, though, although it was still a 24 millimeter. Okay. Um, this was a 24 millimeter, 1.4. So, I, and I was wide open shooting 1.4 for this particular shot. And um, so I just had the dolly or the slider going side to side. It might've had a slight camera turn to it yeah, too. Yeah. I'm not sure, but um, the key is the shallow depth of field. Yeah. And I, I, I'm trying to think of what the angle was of the camera. It was either 45 or even a little sharper. I feel like it was a little sharper yeah, because yeah. Like, it looks like you're almost looking right. down at it. So. And, and this was a setup where, because there was so much weight on the camera leaning forward, yeah. um, it actually held it from rocking back and forth because it was already pulling yeah. to one side, so I didn't have to worry about it like the weight shifting yeah, that, that way. Sense. So no. um, the tripod head that I attached to the slider is an old, I don't even know the brand. It's not any good brand, um, but Isn't it's something, it over I there? Had, yeah, something I had in, uh, <laughs> in high school when I didn't have any money to put into anything. Um, I, yeah, I don't even know if we want to expose the brand, but it's, uh, <laughs> we won't say the brand. Yeah, it's, but <laughs> it's, it's the cheapest plastic you can you could find. But um, it's actually a wonder he's able to <laughs> shoot on it. Yeah, I mean, to, to be honest, it served me well for how much I paid for it. I, yeah. I think it was under. Look at that! It's never broken. Yeah, I think it was it's like kind of uh, crazy. Under fifty bucks. So yeah, there we go. There you go. Now you know all the Brew Baker's secrets now. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what is the plan for future A Moment in History documentaries that are like 20 minutes long or longer? Sure. So, a lot of the first ones we did were um, sur surrounding different holidays. So, um, we have some, you know, we did the Thanksgiving, yeah. Memorial Day. We did, especially these American 
great American holidays, especially with American yeah. history. It's a great um, combination. But um, sometimes, if it's so holiday focused, we you know you can't necessarily play it through the year. Yeah, so we're yeah. we're working on some stuff that isn't you know ti as timely yeah. because I mean, all these air. And yeah, stuff. yeah. And if you want to watch them, it's on FISM.TV. Right. Um, you can watch them all on specifically if you go to our website FISM.TV and go to the news page. Um, there's a drop down for Moment History, and that's where all our Moment History stuff lives now. Eventually, it might have have its own part of the site, but you know that's where it is. You can catch it there now. So. Yep. Well, thank you, Luke, and join us next time for behind the scenes. Next time, we'll be talking about good guys and how they filmed uh, good guys. Yeah, that'll be a fun one. Yeah, it will be. So. Stick around.